Hello, this is VJ from Hearns Hobbies. Uh, welcome again to another uh, open boxing. So if you like our content, please like below or subscribe. That'd be great. So here we go. I'm going to have a look at one of my favorites today. This is the Falky. It's a 120 scale kit uh, from the universe created by Kao Yokoyama. Uh, so Machining Krieger, or it's also known as MAC, so it's M-A dot K, which is short for the machining, and then the K for the Krieger part. Now the great thing about these is, I, I think they're just amazing how these particular aesthetics have been um, created, and they're also designed with a lot of, uh, I guess you call it kit bashing involved. Now if you don't know what kit bashing is, it's uh, getting a whole lot of different bits and pieces, particularly from existing plastic um, kits, and mashing them together and creating something all new, which is this. So there are certain aspects of this which are recognizable, others which are not, um, which is part of the, um, I guess, the, the pull for me anyway, uh, within these particular designs. So there's a very fine art aspect to this. Now what you find is with Machine and Krieger, the artwork on the front is always an original artwork, and that's by Kao Yokoyama. So you see his um, signature here and the year that he actually created this artwork. Now being Hasegawa, these Hasegawa kits do get rerun reasonably often. Sometimes you'll find other ones by manufacturers like uh, uh, Wave and other smaller companies, which are uh, small garage companies, which are resin producers. They may only reproduce every few years. So if you want to get started in machining Krieger, Hasegawa kits are the way to go and simply because they're quite easy to come by and they're reasonably cheap because resin is expensive, as we all know, and being a molded kit, these are more affordable. Okay, so the boxes are really important uh, in they create uh, a lot of the atmosphere. Here we've got the specs of this uh, imaginary vehicle. And then the whole box itself is actually covered with lots of info. So you've got some plan drawings there as well, more specs, and then also a bit of a storyline about what this is all about and the actual aircraft. So you've got more info there as well. And this is more of a, I guess this is a fairly reasonable standard type of configuration for the boxes. They'll be in a beige type finish with uh, box sections and then also these sort of specs. Quite common. All right, let's have a closer look inside and we'll see what sort of goodness is there. So there you go, here's a closer look of the box art. So this particular one's actually got uh, the bomber on it. So is this, this is the bomber cat? No, it's not. So it was another one with a bomber cat uh, because you'll, you'll find that these do come in various versions. So this is the classic Falky and then there's others like the Griffin and also the bomber cat, slightly different versions. All right, let's have a look, closer look inside. All right, so I've got a box, a reasonably thick box too. And this is one of the bigger type kits, which is great. So you can imagine 20 of scale figure, which is um, going to be, what's 20 of scale? That'll be 90 mil. So a 90 mil figure. So there's the cockpit and how it sits inside and we've got the anti-grav devices on the sides there and the two booms. All right, let's start opening up these bits and we'll have a closer look. Oh, there goes my knife. All right, so let's start off with the fuselage, the most recognizable part. All right, so you've got two sections there. You've got the base and you've got the top. Okay, so you're going to have these, they're going to be sandwiched together like this. And that's the bulk of the aircraft. Now when you look down here, you'll see that these parts here, any of the aircraft guys might be able to recognize that, they're actually superchargers. Because I'm pretty sure that these are booms that were borrowed from a P-38 Lightning when the prototype was being built. These particular round sections are pretty famous for being ping pong balls. So that's the sort of little bits that you'll, if you didn't know, you probably wouldn't have picked it. But now, after you know, it's you're going to try and look for all other bits as well. Center section here was actually built out of a car. I can't remember which car. It was a 24 scale, I think, of a Subaru. And then the front section you'll see would be like the front end of the bonnet of a car as well. So quite interesting. All right, so what you get here is you got your top and your lower fuse large. And then we've got the two quilted sides for the cockpit. So you've got these that'll go inside here. And then you've got quite a bit of engine detail there as well. Not too sure where that's from. Could be from an F1 car. It's got a sort of 24th, 20th scale look of an engine. But either way, it doesn't really matter where it's from in the end. The whole thing, the whole design, and the way the aesthetics are being put together is just really, really 
unique. Okay, so the main bits. All right, from there we've got this other huge bag full of parts. And I'll pull those out and we'll look at those one by one. Okay, so here's this part here. We've got the anti-gravity units which are on the front booms. They go underneath. You've got the main cockpit structure there. That's where we're going to have those the, the two quarter sections will be on the sides here. We've got the top of the cockpit, so that's hinged and they'll be able to open and close. We've got the seat. Very thin sort of aircraft type seat. These are the front uh, of the booms. We've got the paddles here, which are, I guess you'll call them like uh, uh, elevators. But because they're separate, you probably call them elevons, whatever you call them. They're the rear control surfaces. We've got a huge panel here, which goes on the side of one of the booms. You've got additional detail here. They go on the bottom, I think. And then we've got covers, which are towards the back for the engine. And this is the start of the huge engine on the back. Now that part is quite interesting too because that was actually derived from a Yakult bottle. So you get the pointy part here and the curve. So once you see that, you'll recognize that as the Yakult bottle engine. Okay, so there we go. So the back side as well, nice and chunky. All right, from there, next piece, we've got some finer parts. All right, so there's the nozzle. So that's the end of the Yakult bottle. And then we've got various parts finer details so you've got engine details you've got cockpit details this is the front end which is uh, like the this is like the uh, what do you call it like the wheel wells of a car so this is left and right these are towards the front of the fuselage these particular parts here i'm not too sure where they go actually we'll check the instructions and they're probably around the engine or yeah i think but you can see how intriguing it is and they look like random parts but they actually have a purpose and go a particular spot to make all this work this is part of the cockpit as well that goes on the inside of the hatch very nice okay from there we've got this is the final piece of sprue let's get that out of the way okay this is for the vehicle itself so you've got the front covers of the in intakes from each boom We've got some uh, gas bottles. Uh, that's a bit of undercarriage, but this doesn't actually have undercarriage. So this is undercarriage taken from aircraft and used elsewhere for detail. We've got the uh, the gun section here. So I think these are the barrels. And you can see these are the, uh, what do you call them? The barrel supports for the Gatling gun. And then we've got, uh, what are they? This is also part of the front booms. We've got various other sort of randomly looking parts. Okay, so that's all for the vehicle. Now we've got a final sheet of sprue, which is the figures. And the figures are really great because they give the real human element to this, uh, the kits. So we have one sort of uh, standing pilot, and that's a female pilot. And then we've got a seated pilot here as well, which will fit into the cockpit. So you can see how there's multiple pieces. Whoop. You've got the two halves for the standing pilot I'm wearing shorts so you've got the legs separately here got the head in two parts you got the face the back of the head and then these are the arms for the seated pilot arms for the standing pilot so they're just arms straight and then with the seated pilot it's got uh, like the uh, anti-g suit you can see the splits here for the knees you can either have a exposed face so the face there. Let me see if I zoom in a bit on here. Alright. So these are the faces there. The faces are really well done. Now I didn't actually say when this was produced. So this is one of the newer kits. Machining crew was actually um, the kits came out by Nito, a Japanese company, in the 1980s, and eventually that disappeared. And due to I think copyright issues, it took a while before kits started coming out again. So you used to see odd kits coming out at uh, Wonder Festival, which was quite a big um, uh, model, uh, I guess, a convention in Japan. So there's a summer and a winter edition. And that's where some kits came out in resin. And then Hasegawa produced this. I think there was a master actually borrowed by someone and then Hasegawa actually cut the molds from it, which is very, very good, very well done. 
And this is uh, one of the first of the kit because the number of the kit, where is it? 64001. So I think this is the first in the Hasgower series of Machine and Krieger. This dates to 2008, 2009. So it's not particularly old, but even from there, you, you sort of expect um, a bit of softness, but it's not much softness. You have to remember that with figurines, they're very organic and they've got a lot of sharp edges. So you will see some of these folds a bit softer, but overall, they're very, very good. Okay, so there's a female pilot's face there. And then you've got the helmet version here. Okay, so you can either have this head or the helmeted head for the pilot. I think the helmeted one actually it looks better, but it's up to you. You've got a lot of choices. Okay, so they're all the plastic parts. That's not the only thing that everyone expects out of a Machine and Krieger kit though. So we'll look at the decals. The decals are always change for each new release. Okay, so if I zoom that out, this has got the classic ghoul's head. Okay, so you've got the skeleton or the skull shape and that's across the face of the main fuselage and then you've got these I guess these are the skeleton fingers which appear on the front of the booms but you do have quite a few options here so you got the flying lobster you got the bomb cat and you got the flying cow they're all pretty funny I think and then you've got a variety of finishes here as well so a lot of choices there decals really interesting all right so apart from that what else will we get you get one of these info cards Okay, so the info cards is something that um, a lot of machine and Krieger comes with and they're designed so that they've got the holes punched in them already so they fit a very small uh, binder. So this gives an idea of the, um, uh, I guess, the specs of all the different aircraft. So it's double-sided and also different color schemes. And so there's the, the ghoul type ones. So they actually call this ghost. Although most of the info is in Japanese, uh, if you're very clever, you can use your uh, smartphone, put it onto Google Translate, and you'll be able to use a camera and it'll translate that for you as well. So that's quite handy. Just a bit of extra artwork, which is really nice to have. All right, and then we get into the manual. Okay, so we've got a pretty standard looking Hasegawa type manual. You've got the line drawings of the actual aircraft there. Paint chart here, which shows the, uh, the GUNS GSI Mr. Color numbers. And then description there as well if you prefer to use different uh, uh, types or brands of paint. Okay, so as we open it up, we've got the legend of all the parts. So we already went through all these parts, so you'll be able to recognize all those. And then it just folds out and we go step by step. So first part, like aircraft, I guess, you start working on the cockpit. So there's a cockpit module. You've got the pilot. So you just make sure the pilot fits in correctly. Start building up the fuselage now. So you've got the lower part of the fuzz. Now this is building up around the cockpit area. These are the wheel wells, which I uh, explained before, which are like from a car. And then we get into the Yakult engine. That's right here. Top of the fuselage now, we've got the instrument panel. Further interior details. And then you'll see the modules here. So you've got sub-assemblies. Engine sub-assembly, cockpit, Lower fuselage, top fuselage, all get sandwiched together. Move on to this side, so step six. <coughs> We've got the panel here for the side of the fuss. Front of the booms. All the additional rear end detail and for the engine. Move on to the, uh, the anti-grave units, which are the ping pong balls. Here's all the detail going into the base of the engine. Then we move on to the big Gatling gun. So multiple piece uh, barrel. You've got that as the sub-assembly glues up into the front section. You've got your elevators or your control surfaces going on. The hinge system to the, uh, the canopy cover. Front cover. And then we get into the figures. And then you've got your pilot figure. There's the choices of different heads. You have the exposed face or the helmeted face. Standing pilot right here. All the paint guys there as well with uh, color mixing guides. And then here we go, all complete. So what have we got here? Detail improvement point. How to make the antenna. Okay, so there's a little antenna there. So you can either use a stretch sprue or a little bit of wire. You can make that quite easily. 
Okay, and then we're getting into the back. So details on how to apply decals. So you can use that basic guide or you can even find multiple guides on YouTube. I've made a guide as well. So if you'd like to see that, that's within our channel. And then that's it. That's the completed Falke manual. Okay, so there we go. So there's my open box review of the Hasegawa Machine and Krieger Mac Falke Anti-Grav Flying Vehicle, I guess you call it. One of my favorites. So very unique design, very recognizable. So if you want to try getting into Machine and Krieger and you like aircraft, this is perfect. You can wear these as much as you like. It doesn't have to be perfect. And there's no set rules on what they need to look like. A lot of people go out and do their own paint schemes. So that's it. The Hasegawa 120th scale Machine and Krieger or Mac Falke. So thank you for watching. <laughs>